Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Okay, question three in our, in our revision set. Show that three over one plus x to the power of p plus three over one plus x to the power of minus p simplifies to a constant. Okay, so I can't see how this is going to happen just yet. So I have to trust that it will happen as I work down through it. It is fractions, so I need a common denominator just like I would any other fractions. And you always will get um, a common denominator when you multiply the two bottoms by each other. So what I'm doing is I'm multiplying that by that. And that will give me a common denominator. Okay. Just going to move this a bit down a little bit to give us a bit of room. Um, okay, so it, it kind of depends now on how you how you've been taught fractions. Okay, so this is is one way that gets taught. It's, it's probably the longer method. You take the common denominator and you multiply it by each piece over one plus xp. OK, so what have I done there? I've taken this common denominator that we've established and I'm just multiplying it by this piece. I then put in the plus sign and I take that common denominator again. And I multiply it by this piece. OK, and what ends up happening is the bit on the bottom will cancel with um, the same one on the top. So him and him and him and him. OK, so let me write out what's left. Three times one plus x to the power of minus p plus three times one plus x to the power of p over one plus x to the power of p, one plus x to the power of minus p. OK, so the net effect is how some of it, some other of you might have been taught. It's a bit like a cross multiply. So you end up with three times one plus x minus p. Do you see it there? Plus three times the other side, three by one plus xp. So some might have been taught to cross multiply. So some might not have this piece at all. They might go straight to this piece. OK, and others are you when you get your common denominator, whichever one it's over, you cover it. And so it becomes three times the other one. And then when you come to this side, you cover the one that it's already over. Do you see that? And so it's three times the other one. Okay, so three different ways of doing the exact same thing. So it's however you handle fractions, okay? And if anyone needs help going through any of those methods, give me a shout. Right, let's, let's multiply out. So I have three by one is three. I then have three X to the power of minus P uh, plus three again, plus three X to the power of P on the top. And on the bottom, I have one by everything in the second bracket. So one by one is one, one by X to the minus P. So I'll just write out here, just in case anybody needs a bit of a help as to what I'm doing. I'm just splitting that bottom line and multiplying it. So one by everything in the second bracket. And then you go back for the plus X to the power of P by everything in the second bracket. Okay, so let's multiply it out and write the answers here. One by one, one by X to the minus P plus X to the power of P by one is X to the power of P. And then I have plus by plus is plus. And I have X to the power of P x to the power of minus p. Okay, so I haven't done anything with them yet. I've just literally wrote them down beside each other and I'll come back to them in a minute. Okay, let's tidy up as best we could. On the top, we get three and three is six. I can't really merge uh, three x to the minus p plus three x to the power of p. Um, I can't use the rules of indices. Let me show you why. Where are they now? here. Do you see the way there's no plus sign in them? So I, I can't really use that, that rule of indices just in case that one's in your head, okay, because of this plus sign in the middle. So then on the bottom I have one 
plus x to the minus p plus x to the power of p. Now, this one is slightly different in that this one is that top rule. OK, I have x to the power of p, x to the power of minus p. OK, so in that case, I can add the powers. So here I'm going to get x to the power of p minus p. OK, so let's keep going. I have 6 plus 3x to the minus p plus 3x to the p over 1 plus x to the minus p plus x to the power of p uh, plus this one here is going to be x to the power of 0 because p to the p minus p is 0. Now, what is x to the power of 0? Well, anything to the power of 0 is 1. OK, so I am getting 1 for that one. OK, right. So now let's see where we are. And I'm going to add that. I, the easiest way I think of, of, factor, of tidying this up is going to be factorizing it, OK? And what I'm hoping to happen, if I'm going to simplify it to a constant, is I need the x to the minus p and the x to the p on the top to cancel somehow with the x to the p and the x to the minus p on the bottom. OK, so that, that's what I'm going to try and do now in a minute. So 1 and 1 is 2. I'm going to put x to the minus p there. Uh, plus x to the p here. Okay, so what am I going to do here? I'm going to factor out that 3 for a start. Okay, to see can I get these to cancel. So let's do that. 3 times 2 plus uh, x to the minus p plus x to the p. See, did I do that right? Three twos are six, three x to the minus p, three x to the p. Okay, so all I did was factor out that three because look, there's no number in the one at the bottom. So I'd like to factor him out. In other words, isolate just the x to the minus p. Okay, and then on the bottom, oh, do you know what? I can leave it as it is, can't I? Because that's going to be a direct cancel with him now. So I have two plus x to the minus p plus x to the p. So you can only cancel full factors. So that is a full factor. That's one factor and three is the other factor. So I can only cancel. I, I, for example, I couldn't cancel the, the x to the minus p and the x to the minus p there. You can't cancel bits off the top and the bottom. You can only cancel full factors. OK, but we're good. That is a full factor now. So my answer is three. If you've enjoyed this video, then why not join us in IT Sligo and use maths in practice. In conjunction with industry, we've designed an exciting new program in electronics and self-driving technologies, which uses cutting-edge techniques such as artificial intelligence, computer vision and virtual and augmented reality. You'll need a H5 in maths to qualify. Check out the link below.